to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. In Greece, Prime Minister Papandreou is about to step down, and all, in all likelihood, his successor will be the former vice president of the European Central Bank, Lucas Papademos. But whoever is the new prime minister, and whatever the new government of Greece looks like, one thing's for sure, if it's up to Europe's bankers and Europe's political leaders, it will be the Greek people that will pay for this crisis. There seems to be not much debate at those levels about the kind of austerity they want to see. Of course, the Greek people may have something else to say about all of this. Now joining us to give us his take on what's the, on the current situation in Greece is Kostas Panayotakis. He's a sociology professor at the New York City College of Technology at CUNY and author of the recently released book, Remaking Scarcity. From Capitalist Inefficiency to Economic Democracy. He joins us now from New York. Thanks for joining us, Custis. Good to be with you. So first, what's, what's happening in the, most recently? And then talk a bit about how the movement's responding to this. Well, this uh, austerity program has been going uh, on in Greece for 18 months. The effects have been devastating on ordinary Greeks. So over time, the resistance has escalated. And it weakened uh, the socialist government. And uh, because of that, the uh, prime minister increasingly had trouble uh, passing through the new waves of austerity measures through the parliament. And that's why he announced a referendum, which um, enraged the European leaders. And um, he and there was also a rebellion within uh, his party, and he had to call it off. And now there is negotiation for a new coalition government with uh, the conservatives uh, that um, is designed to basically push through uh, the latest European agreement that involves, that would commit Greece to more than a decade of harsh austerity measures. And the express uh, function of this coalition, uh, for, or the formation of this coalition government is not to ask Greek people which, according to polls, are opposed to this um, uh, agreement. And there is um, uh, some uh, difficulty in uh, agreeing on the government. Uh, part of that has to do with um, how long the government uh, is going to last. And part of that has to do with the fact that uh, the Conservative Party is now facing an internal rebellion, because all these months, the Conservatives presented themselves as being opposed to the austerity measures, and now they're making a sharp about turn, and uh, a big part of their base is very upset about that. So the, the, the new leader, or new prime minister, is likely to be this former banker, uh, which is, means there'll be now like direct control by the banks without even uh, politicians in between the rule. Um, how is the movement going to respond to this, and, and what, what are they calling for? Well, I think uh, the movement uh, is going to uh, continue. Uh, over the months, what has happened is uh, that uh, the general public has been uh, disenchanted with these policies. Originally, people were willing to give um, the new socialist uh, government at the time uh, the benefit of the doubt. People were shocked by the magnitude of the crisis. Uh, but over time, uh, you see the, the escalation of... Um, of resistance taking a variety of forms, general strikes, occupations of, uh, of public space, and including, uh, you know, last summer there was um, an Occupy movement um, uh, in Athens and around the country with people taking to the central squares. It was uh, in many ways um, uh, a precursor to the Occupy movement um, in the United States. Uh, so. Things are getting so so bad that um, uh, you know the resistance is uh, is bound to to increase. What are the demands that are emerging? I know there was some debate in the movement itself, in the oppositional movement, about whether to call for just a straightforward default on the debt or not, whether to get out of the uh, euro or not. Uh, wh where are people at? People that are involved in the oppositional movement on the streets and such. Yeah, I think uh, there is a division even um, within the anti-austerity camp as to whether uh, default and uh, exiting the Eurozone uh, would be uh, 
the best course of action. There is um, a, a side that says that, um, you know, this is what Greece should do, and they cite the example of Argentina uh, 10 years ago when Argentina basically defaulted and unpack its currency from the U.S. dollar. It faced uh, very uh, drastic uh, sort of economic problems and uh, depression for a short period of time, but then it uh, sort of recovered swiftly afterwards. But then there is another side that argues that um, uh, the, the, the Greek economy is not really comparable to uh, the Argentinian economy and that uh, the best course of action would try to uh, sort of uh, work uh, within uh, Europe and try to uh, create an anti-austerity from the uh, European uh, across, um, across the continent. I mean, from my sort of point of view, without necessarily wanting to argue that one side is, um, you know, correct and the other is wrong, I think at the very least it can be said that um, Greece does have leverage over Europe and we see that each time there is a political crisis in Greece, there is big turmoil, great turmoil around um, around the around Europe and around the world financial markets. And um, Europe has shown that they are willing to blackmail Greece and basically say either you do what we ask you to do or we are going to eject you out of the eurozone. And I'm not convinced that they could easily do that. And I think um, what Greece would need in my view, is um, a government that has um, behind it a strong anti-austerity movement that would basically try to call Europe's bluff and basically just go uh, sort of come out and say these policies are not working, these policies are making the crisis worse, and um, this uh, this uh, and we can see that this failure of these policies by the fact that now a second bailout is necessary. When uh, the first bailout was negotiated 18 months ago, the expectation and the prediction of the European Union and the Greek government and the IMF was that Greece would be able to turn to the financial international financial markets in 2012. This has not uh, uh, materialized and it's not surprising because when the economy, the austerity measures throw the economy into a deep depression, of course, revenues are going to collapse. So this um, this uh, strategy is not working for Greece and it's not working for, for Europe because instead of containing the crisis around the, the Greek crisis, what we see is that the crisis is spreading around Europe and is deepening. Is there, is, there, if, is there any such party? You say there needs to be a party backed by a strong austerity movement that can call Europe's bluff. Is there such a party emerging or, or is there one that exists? Well, um, in Greece, I mean, uh, the, the political force uh, that would be likely to do that would have to come from the left. And Greece does have um, a re relatively powerful left, but the problem is that the left in Greece is uh, fragmented. The main segment of the, the Greek left is the, the Communist Party, and they have been uh, basically segregating themselves from everybody else. And there is uh, the second largest party of the left has called for, it's called the Coalition of Radical Left, has called for, you know, sort of uh, a kind of um, forming an anti-austerity front that would include um, um, all the parties of the left as well as uh, the many citizens and voters from the two major parties that are disenchanted with um, with austerity, but uh, this, even though they have called for that, this has not materialized uh, yet. And that's and unless there is this kind of um, uh, consolidated anti-austerity fall in Greece, I think um, uh, the anti-austerity the uh, the anti-austerity argument will not be as compelling to people because. I think many Greeks, even though they're very disenchanted with these policies and they don't think they're going to work, they also, many of them have a kind of fatalistic attitude that, um, you know, there is no real alternative. I mean, it's kind of shows the, the, both the strengths and weaknesses of, this, of the mass movement, both whether it's in Greece or other parts of Europe or in fact in New York or uh, North American cities. 
you know, sort of the lack of the spe organizational specific strength, specific clear demands in a program, lack of that helps give it size because everyone can buy in. But on the other side of it, there, uh, if you look at Greece, there doesn't seem to be a united front developing with an electoral strategy that can actually take power in some way. Yeah, I think uh, this is the challenge that uh, is facing um, the Greek left. I mean, this is one of the, uh, you know, most important crises in Greek society. In many ways, you know, the left um, is proving prophetic as to the state of um, uh, the Greek uh, economy. For years and years, they were uh, basically uh, debunking in various ways the the false sense of prosperity that existed in Greece, especially after its entry, entry to the Eurozone. But now the crisis of, uh, has struck. In many ways, their predictions have come true. But, um, you know, the challenge now is for them to actually present a compelling alternative. And uh, without it, they will just uh, continue being, uh, you know, sort of relatively marginal players in the Greek political system. Well, whether do you see a, a vision that makes some sense to you? Like, is there is there a voice in Greece with an alternative vision that's resonating with you? Well, I mean, I think uh, this idea that uh, political forces uh, in Greece are suggesting this anti-austerity front does uh, make a lot of uh, sense to me. Um, it is hard to for this uh, you know front to form without the cooperation of the Communist Party, which has uh, at least uh, around 10 percent of the vote. And um, uh, so I think uh, this uh, this program that has been articulated by various forces, I mean, the, I mentioned the coalition of ra the radical left, which includes uh, one major party with uh, roots in the European movement of Euro communism in the, from the 70s, along with other left wing and ecological Party. So, I mean, uh, there is this kind of microcosm of um, um, sort of cross a, a coalition across different political forces. But, you know, most of the ingredients of this coalition are relatively, you know, small. Um, and the, the entire coalition, you know, is around 5% of the electorate, has the support of the 5% of the electorate. So um, what uh, we need is not just... Um, uh, articulating a different point of view, although this is uh, necessary, but also the different parties uh, being willing to come together, join forces, and uh, attain a kind of critical mass that would then uh, sort of encourage many of the Greeks who have dropped out of the political system in disgust or in, uh, you know, sort of uh, desperation, uh, um, to basically think that, yes, an alternative um, is, um, is possible. Thanks very much for joining us, Kostas. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.